starting to use our apartment's only bathroom, shifting from foot to foot. When the door burst open and my sister walked out, her eyes raw and puffy, followed closely by mother, arms tightly alert. Ready to catch her as she fell, as she melted, as she died. My sister had chosen this day, my twelfth birthday, to try to kill herself, or at least to pretend to kill herself. Looking back on that day now, I can see it was merely a stunt to gain attention. And even then, I think I knew she was bluffing, but still I couldn't ignore the blue dish and the paring knife sitting on top of the toilet seat, a tip pointing toward the bathtub like a compass needle. On the dish, a pile of white pills sat like an offering. I put the dish and the knife on the floor and flipped the seat up. As I peed into the hole, I stared down at the silver edge of the blade, wondering how close it had come to my sister's wrist. Mm. When I finished, I walked the stuff back to the kitchen, let the pills roll up to the faded formica countertop, and counted twelve of them. I arranged the tablets on the dish in a circle, placed a paring knife in the center, and mouthed the words happy birthday in English. I wheeled the knife around until it pointed five past seven, the exact time my head would have poked out of my mother's, you know what? Twelve years ago to this day, the 28th of February, my squishy eyes slowly unsticking, wondering just why the world had gotten so cold. I called my sister Nuna, Korean first sister. Her full name was Insook, and her American name was Susan. She wouldn't know this until later, but there was another name waiting, Sue, one she would eventually go into. Nuna, almost 16, had days when she didn't say a single word, not to me or anyone else. Then there were days when she wouldn't shut up. I would ask her if she wanted another ice cream bar, and she would start cursing like you wouldn't believe. When Father wasn't at the store, he was in New York, striking deals with wholesalers and vendors. So he wasn't around to see these strange fits. Luckily, Mother was home to handle her. When my sister became deaf-mute, Mother spoke to her like there was nothing wrong. Mm. And when Nuna became irate, Mother listened calmly. And when there was a break in the yelling, she took her into her arms, where for a moment my sister would sink and disappear. When she resurfaced, silent bright rivers ran down her cheeks. Mm. Nuna was not taking the move from Seoul, Korea to Oak Ridge, New Jersey too well. <laughs> Unlike me, she actually had friends to miss, especially her boyfriend. She wanted to call them all, but father wouldn't let her because it was too expensive. And besides, with a half-day time difference, it was next to impossible to get anybody at a reasonable hour. Nuna called anyway. I only called four times, she said to father with a full mill arrived. Three hundred dollars? He screamed. The first time I heard him scream. Before then, he was nothing but nice to us. <laughs> Where am I going to get three hundred dollars? It's the least you can do, Nuna said. Her voice stood at the edge of a cliff. Father had no rebuttal. He looked hurt. He looked tired. That was the first month, the first phase of Nuna's loneliness. Soon to swell heavy and round like a full moon. The very next day after their fight, Father came home with the biggest tape recorder I had ever seen. Here, he said, showing Nuna how to use it. It was the kind that you find in high school language labs, mm. the black rectangular monsters with one giant wolf on top. The buttons were so big you almost had to use two fingers. When Father pressed eject, the lid sprang up like a catapult. Nuna put the tape recorder to work immediately. She spoke intensely, her long black hair falling around the unit like a cape, her lips floating over the tiny triple slack of the built-in microphone. <laughs> the first day she sat in her room and made five 90-minute tapes in a row. Seven and a half hours of her fragile voice laid out on a thin magnetic ribbon. How could anybody have that much to say? It was a miracle she was able to keep the phone bill under a thousand dollars. When the tapes were ready to be mailed, she insisted on accompanying Father to the post office.
with as much nervousness as a mother sending her child off to school for the first time. The reply didn't come for three long weeks. When Nuna saw the package from Korea with her name on it, she ripped into it with animal ferocity. There was a quick scribble on an index card and a tape that looked too professional to be an amateur recording. Mm. The note read, Sorry you can't be here. This band is really good. We miss you. <laughs> my, li my sister listened to tape once, slipped the back in the case, and buried it deep in her drawer. She wasn't eating well, and she was losing weight. She chewed her food slowly and carefully, as if her mouth was full of broken glass. Her eyes were puffy or red, and they were black and sleepless. Mother was worried. I knew this because she came <coughs> up with ridiculous suggestions. Maybe you two should sleep in the same bed, she said. <laughs> you know, like when we were in Korea. I'm too old now, I said. Says who? Mother, we're in America, I explained. In America, brothers and sisters don't sleep in the same bed. Mother nodded, there her hands, sighed. A few stray graves had multiplied since our move. She looked old and scratched up like my second-hand dresser. It was hard enough being Nuna's roommate, let alone sharing the same bed. <laughs> Nights were the worst. From the other side of the room, I heard her lingering sobs. How they seemed to come automatically without any provocation. I tried not to be rude, but after a week of running short on sleep, I had to push off the covers and yell, Can you please stop crying? <laughs> she stopped. Mm. I couldn't leave it work just like that. Mm. That's better, I said half jokingly. But no response was forthcoming. I felt bad for yelling at her, but in an instant I was dreaming of sitting flush in a candy striped lazy boy on a soccer field, <laughs> munching on barbecue potato chips, my new favorite food. <laughs> the next day was my twelfth birthday, when she did the night on a pill thing. But suffice it to say, I was not pleased with myself. Mm. Thank you.